IGTV, Inspiring Dominion. And in what denomination? And so many people are surprised. How did these people get to know this idea? And these days I'm told in town, whenever you're walking, someone comes and drops a, uh, an envelope before you. And because of greed, you think it's money. You go and grab it. Two people appear from nowhere and tell you, hey, by the way, let's go and divide it among ourselves. Not knowing that you are falling into hands of thieves and robbers. And also there's a lady who was saying that uh, a very smart young man came to him and asked for direction. He said, I'm new here in town. And this person came very close to this lady. And that lady felt a very strong order. Harufu Moja strong. After that, she did not know what happened. People told him, we thought he was your friend. Because he came, he hugged you, he, hold your, he held your hand, you went. The lady said she lost all her phones, she lost her handbag, she lost the laptop she was having. The thieves are devising so many things. But be alert, be watchful. So the Bible continues to encourage us that so you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Although we were meant to recognize the season of our Lord's return, we do not know the exact time, nor the day, nor the hour. This is consistent with God's dealing with this world in the past. We've seen the story of Noah. When people were drinking, people were eating and having fun. We must illustrate the need of readiness. I don't know if you know the firemen or firefighters. I watched a clip that they are trained and equipped definitely to fight fires. They know that there will be fire. But they do not know when and what time the fire will, uh, will come, will arrive. So they have to be that, in that state of readiness, even when they sleep. And there was another drill that I was seeing, that in their workstation there are always these small, small beds, uh, if you are working uh, in uh, night shift. And then they will strip down all their clothes, you know those heavy clothes, their overalls, their helmets, all those uh, tools they normally use, the boots. So there's alarm that will be pressed. So the drill was for them, for the fastest, for the for the person who will address the fastest. So that's the kind of readiness as Christians well, we should have. That we since we do not know the day or the time. We should be alert, should be watchful, we should be vigilant. Now, that's the context this parable of the ten virgin is placed. From verse 24, where the disciples came to Jesus and asked them, and asked Jesus, when will this happen? And what are the signs? So looking at the parable of the ten virgins, we are seeing that there are some, several things that we need to consider before we attempt to inter interpret uh, this parable. First, we need to set aside our current, how we normally hold our wedding. It's basically different from how the wedding in Jesus' time were held. Definitely in our generation, if a young man and a young woman, they meet, I don't know where they meet, by the way. Rispa, where do young men and young women meet? Is it on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter? Wherever they meet, 
or in Kesha, or say, is it, is it Kesha? Wherever they meet, we are told that there is a wedding committee whereby you set up the budget, the different color codes. This definitely goes for the ladies. The colors, the flowers. The other day there was a wedding for a celeb. We are told that he just had a list of the cream de la cream. Of the who is who only. So if you are not known, definitely you cannot appear in such a wedding. Definitely we have the cars, we have the locations, we have those uh, uh, event managers, you hire them. They do all the running around for you. That's the current, our current uh, type of wedding. But in those days, we are told that the ten virgins carried a lamp. And, then, and definitely, this lamp was not like our kind of lamp. Remember our lamp? Some of us when uh, back uh, Oshago, there was a chimney, there was a glass, there was a tank, wick, kitambi, you, you adjust, you pour oil and then you adjust. That was not the kind of lamp they were carrying. This, one's, well, this one was a bit different. You remember when the soldiers came to arrest Jesus, they were holding uh, their lamp high up like this. There was like something like a rod, and then it's, it's lit somewhere up there. That's the kind uh, of lamp they had. So you had to add oil, either a rope or a wick, and then you light. So definitely that was the kind of uh, lamp uh, they had. And we are told that the ten, all the ten virgins brought their lamps. But only five brought the oil. The wife virgins, the five virgins brought oil. The five foolish virgins did not carry oil. You might wonder, why am I calling them wise and foolish? Wise, basically, in this context, it says, is, the, is someone with knowledge or good judgment? The wise virgin, someone who had knowledge or, and good judgment. Foolish means lacking judgment. So when you hear me saying of the wise virgin, just remember it. Someone who has knowledge or good judgment. When I say foolish, is someone lacking judgment. So I told that they brought. All of them, they brought the lamp. Five wise uh, virgins brought oil. Five foolish uh, virgins did not bring the oil. The group tarried longer than expected, and so all ten bridesmaids slept. Suddenly at midnight, someone cried out, the groom is approaching. All ten virgins are awakened, awakened by the cry. And they begin to prepare the lamp for ceremonial services. The five foolish virgins asked the five foolish virgins to share their oil, but their request was denied. It wasn't that the five wise virgins didn't care. It was because there will not be enough, there will not be enough oil for all ten lambs. So the foolish virgins were told to go and purchase their own oil, which they did. But during their absence, the torchlight parade took place. In those days, definitely, the bridesmaid, the uh, bridesmaids will lead the bridegroom to the room with the lights, uh, with the uh, lamps. That was the kind of uh, ceremony they used to do in that day. In our generation, definitely, when they're ever ent entering the church, there's those dances you normally dance. Then you go and stand strategically. These days, I see, sometimes back, people used to stand. These days, I see there's some nice seats that are put there when the minister is officiating uh, the wedding ceremony. That's the kind of uh, the difference 
of the two uh, weddings. So that once they went and the bridegroom came and the five voice uh, virgins came and led the groom into the uh, house in the room, when they came back, they started to plead, Lord, Lord. But they were told, I do not know you. I do not know you. As we consider the interpretation and application of this parable, we should begin by observing that It is one of several par parables that, uh, or stories, or analogies that uh, Jesus had given. All of the parables have to do with what? That we do not know the coming of Christ, or the end of the ages. Jesus assures us that we should be able to discern the seasons of his return. That's why he's telling us to be vigilant, to be watchful, and to be alert. But while we may know the season, we cannot and will not know the day nor the hour of his return. So let's be alert. So all the parables, the stories that are read, has to do with us being ready for his return. But we are seeking to design the unique message of this parable, the parable of the ten virgins. What is it that this parable teaches us that we do not find in the other parables that we read from chapter 24? But let me briefly share what this parable of the ten virgins shares in common with all the others, uh, the others have read. We are told that this parable, like all the other parables in this section, Jesus tells his disciples privately. So Jesus is teaching his disciples privately. Secondly, this parable, like the other in, the, in that, uh, the ones that have gone through, instructs us to be ready when Jesus returns to the earth. Thirdly, the parable is consistent with the rest in that it indicates that the Lord's return will not be nearly soon as the disciples suppose. Because when uh, they were coming to tell, uh, to ask the to ask Jesus about the end of time, it was that time before uh, Jesus was being arrested. Also, the, this parable, the parable of the ten virgins, portrays the return of Christ as sudden and unexpected. That we were talking about like the others, like a thief gave the example of a fig tree. Therefore, we are being told that we should stay alert because we do not know the day or the hour. What is unique contribution of this parable of the ten virgins? First, we see that this parable describes what the kingdom of heaven will be like at the time of the second coming. Some will say that this parable describes the condition of the church at the second coming. Jesus is speaking here of his disciples. He's not speaking to his adversary or the Jewish religious leaders nor is the crowd. He's talking to his disciples. That's one of the unique things. Secondly, we should observe, observe that for some period of time the five foolish virgins were almost not able to be distinguished from the five wise virgins. They all looked alike. So all the ten virgins looked alike. 
The five foolish virgins, remember, addressed the groom, Lord, because definitely they knew he was their Lord. The five foolish virgins looked just like the five wise virgins. They all were invited to the wedding celebration and they all came expecting to participate in the wedding. The five virgins were not different from the five wise virgins. Remember that. Thirdly, none of the ten virgins knew when the groom would arrive. And all became drowsy and slept. Fourthly, we are seeing that the five wise virgins did not want to share their oil with the foolish virgins. You might think that was so mean. This was not because the five wise virgins were selfish. In the context of the story, sharing their oil might have might have meant that all ten will run short of the oil. But when we come to the interpretation of this parable, we can see that the saved cannot share what they have in Christ with the lost. The lost will not enter heaven based on the salvation others have received. It's personal. Remember that? It's a personal work with Christ. We cannot share the anointing. We cannot share the call. We find it emphasized here that once our Lord returns, there is neither time or opportunity for the five foolish virgins to change their course of unbelief. Once the day comes, you cannot suddenly realize, ah, the Lord has come. Now, I want to get saved. No. No. Time will be up. So you have to be alert. We have to prepare. Six. So you are seeing, after the Lord has come, the outcome is either heaven or hell. And the key element is salvation. We saw that when the groom had come, when the foolish uh, virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, but he replied, I tell you the truth, I do not know you. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter in the kingdom of heaven. Only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. So taking Matthew, the text in Matthew, our words literally, the difference between the foolish virgin and the wise virgin was one thing, that the wise virgins had oil for their lamps, and while the foolish virgins did not. The wise virgins had the opportunity to obtain oil, and they did so. The foolish virgins had plenty of opportunity to buy oil, or to get oil, but did not. Do you know it's possible to be in close contact with, the, with Christ? And with Christians, yet we do not recognize or we do not receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We can speak like Christians. We can dress like Christians. We can walk like Christians. I don't know how Christians walk. Jose, how do you walk? You're a Christian. I'll, I'll be observing you. But definitely you are not. You have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So my encouragement this morning is that uh, let's be alert. Let's be watchful. Let's be vigilant. Because we do not know the day nor the time. 
We do not know the day or the time. He might come like a thief at night. My prayer is that I will dedicate uh, our lives to the Lord and prepare as so though we are going to a wedding. You know when someone goes to a wedding, they have to prepare themselves. When someone is going to do an exam, people normally prepare themselves. Okay, others don't prepare themselves. They say that they just close their eyes and call upon the name of the Lord that everything that they were taught will come to mind. Is it true? It's not true. Kaji or Jui? Kaunastas? Prepare! I don't know why people take time when they invited maybe, maybe with the head of state to go and eat kamoshere na kanyama na kafirifiri. You take time to prepare. Kadufu. You take time to prepare. But of the things of the Lord, we just want to take them casually. The day of the time, we do not know. Be alert. Be vigilant. Be watchful. That's the message this morning. That we be alert. We be vigilant. We be watchful. That we should not be like the five foolish uh, virgins who had all the time. They had all the time. You could not distinguish them from the wise virgins. They all had the lamb. They all had the swag. They all had the, I don't know what clad they were. Did you look with the Gani by that time? They all looked alike. But the time came when the groom was approaching. That's when they realized, ah, I've been in church all this time. I've been walking like a Christian. I've been talking like a Christian. I've been praying like a Christian. But I've not received this. Jesus Christ in my heart as Lord and Savior. That man will call Lord, Lord. But the Lord will tell you, I never knew you. I do not know you. Why? It's all because of the heart. We can walk. We can talk. We can smile. We can sing. You know, talking like a Christian is so easy. I heard a story that uh, there was a young man who used to like another young lady, but that young lady was a staunch Christian. So this young man schemed that he decided eh, he had a friend who was a Christian. Told him, Bana, hey, maze, tukanifundisha hii vibe ya Christian so that uh, mkitika chati mtu unasema gaje praise the Lord sawa eh? and then unasema aje so he went to pay for some classes because he really loved this young lady so also he started attending church so he fit strategically at an angle theater that when people are told shake hands to five people he'll make sure he reaches to the young lady and smile and shake the hand. And also it hung a little too long in attempt of getting to know more about the lady. And then it happened that uh, people are put in groups. Once people are put in groups, now there was a Bible study. So he made sure also he landed in that same Bible group for Bible study that the young lady was. So the thing was simple. So everybody was told to give in that inter in, in a group for you to break ice, there's that interaction, there's that introduction. So I told everybody to give their testimony. <laughs> Tell a testimony. Hey, the guy is so fire. He never paid for the classes for testimony. That's the thing. So he did not know how it goes. 
Because he was, he was uh, impersonated. He was not a Christian. You, can't, you cannot act like a Christian. It comes out. Out of your abundance of the heart, your mouth speaks. If the Lord indeed has changed you, if you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's not something that you have to cram or do. You don't need to go for classes. It's just something that oozes out. It just comes out. So he went. He wanted to demand his uh, fee back. You know, he, went, he had uh, books for classes and he was coached. So he said that from that day, I will never, ever try that. But later he became a Christian. He accepted the Lord in his heart. So I'm saying that we have to know ourselves. Are we the, like the foolish, the five foolish virgins or the five wise virgins? Remember, foolish is lack of judgment. Being foolish is lack of judgment. Being wise is having knowledge. Or having good judgment. So it's up to us. Since Christianity is a personal walk with Christ. At what step would you want uh, Jesus to find you? In conclusion, also Jesus told them this story, this parable in uh, Matthew chapter 24 from verse 45. Tell the disciples, who then is the faithful and wise servant? It's one of the stories, the parable he was using in the background of uh, this uh, parable of us today. He was telling them, who then is the faithful and wise servant whom the master has put in charge of the servants, servants in his household to give them their food at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. So we have servants. One is put in charge with the master to give the others their food at the proper time. We are told that it will be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. Truly, I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose that servant is wicked and says to himself, my master is staying away a long time. Namju wa kujagi sai. Atakawia. And he then begins to beat his fellow servants. Nambia zoe umeni zoe asana. Waja sasa mimi ndio kinara hapa. Mimi ndio kusema. And then he begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with his friends. When the master of the servants comes, on a day when he does not expect him. And at an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces. And assign him to a place with hypocrites. Where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So this morning my message is simple. Be alert. Be watchful. Be vigilant. Decide if you want to be the wise virgins or the foolish virgin. Let me ask Bishop to come and conclude for us. Even as we conclude, you are very much welcome. Uh, if you are watching us, uh, please find time to come and be with us and fellowship with us here at Uzuri for the interdenominational students at Chapel. Thank you. Amen. We thank you for our pastor for that word of encouragement that he has taken us through, that we should prepare ourselves to be vigilant. Even in this generation we are in, it's very important to prepare ourselves. You know, we prepare for many other things about our own life. We prepare for many things, but there's one thing that most of us forget to prepare for, for our eternity. Prepare for school, prepare to get married, prepare to advance your career, you prepare to get babies, you plan and do all those things. You try to work and to even to program and to put things in place. But in the process of doing all this, the 
is one thing most of us unconsciously we forget to plan and prepare for our eternity. And it's so simple. Why? It's because Christ died at the cross. And he said, all is finished. He gave himself for you and I that whoever believes in his sacrifice, the price that he paid at the cross, the suffering that he went through, if you accept him as the Lord and Savior, you'll be born again. You'll be saved. And you become a child of God. And that is the beginning towards eternity. Because all other things come to an end. Very soon, all this that we see, it has a, a beginning and it has an end. But life after death, has no end forever and ever and ever. Amen. So what is more precious to prepare for? The other uh, programs and the things of this earth of the eternity. How I pray even as young people even as we, we are as we prepare for the things of this world may we also prepare ourselves for the eternity. One as few we will learn to accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. And in Him, we have the fullness of life and the fullness towards the eternity. Father, we thank you and we honor you. We thank you for the message of the day. How we pray that that word will find fertile grounds in our hearts and a place to settle, that it may transform our thinking and our preparation. And Lord, we may not be like those foolish virgins, but we may be like the wise virgins who knew that the master can come at any time. And for that reason, they prepared themselves. May we be prepared because we don't know the hour that you shall strike and come for us. But at whatever time you come, we will be found worthy to stand before you as our Lord and Savior. Father, we pray that we may touch our hearts you may touch our thinking and cause us, oh God, to give our lives to you and to accept you as our Lord and Savior. We thank you for this land that, Lord, you have given to us. We thank you for the season that we live in. Yes, there are challenging seasons. There are the days that, Lord, in the book of Matthew and in the book of Daniel are expressed. The days of the last but we pray, O oh Jehovah, that you shall give us this, the ability and the wisdom to number our days, to understand the situations, and to put our life in order. We thank you, Lord. We pray, the Lord, you may bless our education, even as we serve you, and as we go on with the acquired skills and knowledge. We pray, the Lord, you shall bound us that which Lord you have blessed us with. You shall cause us to be diligent in that which we acquire. You shall cause us, Lord, to walk in the narrow path, to be straight. The Lord, we shall not waste our youth, but we shall put our youth into proper use. So, Lord, when we become of age, before you turn, we are able to look back and say it was worthy in the path that we undertook. We pray that Lord shall bless our parents and the guardians who keep us in schools that they may have much resources. Lord, to pay our fees and to enable us to finish the desires of our hearts that we desire to be. We thank you and we honor you. We pray for stability of the nation, Lord, because the, the scripture informs us wherever we are, we may pray for that city. And when the city has peace and prosperous, so we, shall we be. Father, we pray for the land of Kenya, there shall be peace, there shall be oneness, and there shall prosper. Because as it prospers, the occupants who we are, we shall also prosper. We thank you and we honor you, Lord. We release ourselves to you. We pray for the institution, Lord, that as we keep putting it into place, Lord, may it become a product that many will pass by, and their dreams and inspiration shall be met. And when they step out of these gates, they will 
remember it was worthy having been part and parcel of his family because of the goodness of the Lord upon their lives. We thank you and we worship you. Commit the week that is ahead of us before you, Lord. May you bless it, Lord. May you take care of each one of us. We pray all this believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship with the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for coming. Let's keep coming. Let's not tire. DJTV, Inspiring Dominion.